I did post the question as well to the director's list for the uh, reaching across Illinois library system. Um, I, I don't know the total number of public libraries that are a member of that, but it's many, many libraries, at least over 60 libraries that are participating there. And um, fewer than five responded that they are doing the, the videotaping of their general board meetings. Mm -hmm. And no one is providing audio or video recordings of their committee meetings at this time. Because mm, they're working meetings. I'm, I'm thinking of when we go to do the budget, that's almost a learning experience where you're looking at the thing and you're scratching through and that's more give and take. I don't know what you would get from uh, videotaping. I mean, because right. it's a working meeting. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be adverse as yeah. somebody saying, you know, perhaps looking to see if we could have a better quality audio. Um, as I said, everybody likes podcasts and listens to things and they're certainly much more accessible than... Um, sitting and watching something. Um, I, if I were looking at this, I would maybe, you know, investigate trying to, you know, a better quality audio before, and then making it available and see if there's any interest Excuse in me, that. Right. But so that's, that's, that's let's say, I'm only on for two more. Is there any bandwidth issues in posting all those on digital? Um, we like currently post right. to um, YouTube, so um, okay. I, I'm not really sure what the requirement is or what the limits are in terms of how many videos that we can post there. Um, but uh, we could we could post in the same location um, an audio recording just with a still image that would go across okay. that. And, and audio is a popular mm -hmm. format on YouTube, so um, we could still use that platform if that's something that the board wished to do. Um, I think some min some meetings might lend themselves, but some. Yeah, I, I, and I would be curious yeah. too to, to measure if anybody would really listen to them because I don't, I you know, I, I you know, I don't know how many people even watch the, the video um, broadcast, but at least they have it accessible and, and open is not a bad thing. And, um, uh, we could also include a um, like a bonus word every 30 minutes, <laughs> and, you, and if you click the bonus words, you get like a free you know free movie rental or something. <laughs> and and one of the things that I would note too, reflective of the fact that we were the first to do a videotape, yeah, yeah, it would not. I would not say that we have current state-of-the-art equipment because this was put in place when we first started doing yeah. this about 15, 20 years ago. So most of the... So uh, you, we want to think about what that means in terms of the quality and the equipment that we have yeah, and how to proceed going <laughs> forward. Which and meetings you do and which meetings are appropriate right. yeah. and which meetings are not appropriate. I, I, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this is good information. Mm -hmm. And both trustee attendance and videotaping, in my opinion, ought to be within the province of the, and here it is, guys, the <laughs> policy committee, the committee that I'm appointing for a month and a half. Uh, but it does consist of people who are continuing, who have demonstrated a lot of dedication, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so, and I've talked to Lisa and Stuart and Ron have all agreed to serve on the policy committee. Um, the other committee um, that I need to appoint, and this is new, uh, is also new. We've not done a nominating committee, formal nominating committee. I mean, in a sense, you know, we're a board of seven. It sort of becomes sort of obvious as to what, but it's good to have to sit down and make sure that we've discussed the matter thoroughly. So I have asked Jan and Dan to serve on the nominating committee, and... Um, Dan points out, well, you know, it's the new board that decide. Absolutely, this nominating committee will submit a slate. I won't even be there when it gets voted on. That will be in May. Uh, but it's a chance to talk to the board, individual, the members of the George, what, the, what they feel that their time availability is for the, you know, the next two years, their interests are, and be able to collect that information for the new board to vote on it at the at that May meeting. So, okay. Um, outdoor renovation project update. 
Okay, so there is um, a long narrative that's under tab seven. Mm -hmm. um, I had exchanged an email with you back on March 7th following our March 5th um, special meeting where we approved the, the bids for the project. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to go over those details again with you. Um, I did send out this update, updated um, document that kind of supplements what I had emailed to you on the 7th um, last Friday the 15th wherein I added some details about bike racks and the note that there was going to be a meeting at the Village Hall today um, to discuss our uh, permit, which is currently under review for this project. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to be able to deliver a, at least a verbal update to you about the outcome of that meeting this afternoon, but I have not heard from the Village about the status on our permit. Um, this is what keeps us in limbo right now. Um, we really have no news to report until we have a permit because that's what, what's going to allow us to actually proceed forward on the project. Did they give you any kind of time sequence for that? Or? I have no, no information to share at this okay. point about when that permit will be issued. Mm -hmm. All I can say is that our plan <coughs> remains to commence the project on April 1st or as soon as the project can commence um, for the, uh, the village's review. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, there is some concern about um, our site utilization plan. Um, the site utilization plan incorporates usage of a portion of the village's parking lot for staging of some of the equipment and material for the project. Um, it's also where the, um, the dumpster would go, um, porta potty, a storage um, container. These are all things that um, we didn't feel would fit on our, on our property. Um, there are a number of reasons why we didn't want to put it on the, the library's pavers um, part of the pa parking lot. Right. <laughs> um, it would also be disruptive to the flow of traffic in and out of the library if we were to, to sequester it to that back corner um, where staff typically parks. Then all we would have to worry about is relocating staff spaces to off-site parking, which is currently in the process. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but we understand that this is a part of the process that the village had some concerns about and that they were, they were discussing today. Okay. That's all that I know about and I only know about that through hearsay. Um, the pieces that I do know about that I can report on today are the fact that there was some email exchange this morning about uh, the bike racks. So you may recall that in our meeting on March 5th, uh, when we approved the, um, the bid packages, um, there was an alternate for the bike racks. Um, we decided to call that out as an alternate on this project and we held on that one um, because we wanted to investigate the options that were available to us with the village. Um, I've learned recently that as part of the uh, downtown streetscape project through the village, that the village is planning to replace approximately 30 bike racks um, around the downtown area and that they are partnering with um, the Bike Club of Wilmette um, who uh, were awarded a grant through um, the Wilmette Rotary uh, to secure some new branded bike racks downtown, which is really outstanding. Um, <laughs> The grant was for $7,500, and um, that should cover the cost, uh, primarily the cost for the, the racks that they're going to be installing downtown. There's a special design that is going to be on those racks that will make them unique to Wilmette. They will be branded with the word Wilmette on them, and they're really attractive. Um, I met with um, village engineer Dan Manis last week, and he showed me a mock-up of what they look like and kind of talked about what the layout for that plan is and I expressed an interest in getting a similarly branded um, bike rack here for us. I thought, why not have a unified image for all the bike racks in the downtown area and extend these racks to the, uh, the west side of the tracks as well. Um, they liked the idea and they thought that actually with an economy of scale, there may be some savings if they were able to amp up the purchase. Uh, they, again, they were looking for 30 racks and we need 10 for our project, so that's a pretty substantial number increase. Maybe there would be a discount that would be available. Um, so they were curious um, about how we could, you know, scale the, uh, the purchase order for this so that the, um, the expenditures could be handled in such a way that would be right. clean and easy. So we're currently working that out right now. I have no information really to report about that, but I'm excited about the prospect that we might actually be able to save the village some money on this project as well as save the library some money from what we were initially originally budgeting while also having this kind of unified bike brand for that all the racks That would delay the bike racks till a year later because they're not putting them in till next right. Actually they're putting them in this summer okay. so it coincides quite nicely with our project. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the issues however that relates to all this subject um, so any any questions about what I just laid out 
about you know friend at unify all the bike racks um, so one of the issues that we do have as part of the site utilization plan for this project and the phasing of the concrete replacement is that the first phase concrete replacement is to incorporate um, the village um, sidewalks are going to be taken care of first. That was going to, originally going to be one of the last things that we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the um, repair to the village sidewalk in front of the library actually happens to be where the current bike racks are right now. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So, um, so we're all really excited that we're going to be able to get these in time for when we would normally be installing them. However, the concrete, or, the concrete contractor would like to be able to start on this aspect of the project and it actually makes really good sense the way that they phase this out. That means that we're gonna to have to come up with a temporary bike, la bike rack solution. So I've been working with um, our construction manager to try to determine a cheap solution that will make sure that we have bikes um, able to be parked and, and locked up here at the library during the construction project. But when you get those, other, when the other ones come, do you have to do some more concrete work? Actually, we will not. Um, the, the, the bike racks that are slated for the downtown village project are, um, affixed to the concrete with an epoxy first and then they're bolted down. Mm -hmm. The ones that we were initially looking at here would actually be set in the concrete and we've mm -hmm. determined that that's kind of overkill in terms of a security measure um, that there, we really don't need that type of application. So, Which one did they decide on? Because they had a choice of two at the open meeting they had a couple of so they had two, so it is an inverted U um, shape, which is the similar to what we have um, mm -hmm. in our plan. And um, they had two different font families that they were looking at. One of them was a serif font and one was a sans serif. And I believe mm -hmm. that they went with the serif font. That's the one with the feet on it. So it's like a Times New Roman kind of font. It's very attractive. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so that's kind of, I, I think, all, all the updates that I have um, outside of what's in this attachment, but I'm more than happy to um, discuss any other questions or details that you'd like to go into about the outdoor renovation project. I will just <clears throat> make the comment that I think it's wonderful to be working with the village and the library together to put put forth a design or whatever else is necessary. Okay. Uh, director's report. Do you have other things as well? <laughs> I think Nothing. there are a few things, just a few things just, going just on in the library. Sure, sure. We're, we're keeping busy. Um, so the, the first item in my director's report and something I'm really excited about. My favorite day of the year at the library is always the Staff Institute Day. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm grateful to the board for allowing us to close for the day so that we could um, dedicate um, our time to uh, developing our team. So on Staff Institute Day, uh, March 1st, um, our committee prepared um, quite a raft of really intense programming for us. Um, the day began with me providing an overview of our past year of programs, um, events and services, and just our overall performance in reaching our strategic initiatives. I essentially summarized the content from last um, month's meeting where we went over the strategic plan and also talked about our statistical progress. Um, we also celebrated a number of staff milestones. I'm impressed by the tenure of our team. Mm -hmm. um, so many of our staff have been with our library for 20 years or better. And it's really reflected, um, if you look at the smiling faces in that picture, and for those of you looking on the camera, in my report you'll see there's a picture. Um, I'm really impressed with um, just how outstanding this team has been. Um, it's been a short time for me here, just five months, but I've um, really become fond of this team and, and that day, uh, March 1st, really reinforced it for me. Mm -hmm. um, so the programming that we had that, um, that was put together by our committee ranged from safety and security programming. As I mentioned, we're doing a safety and security study here at the library right now. Um, we're looking to, to update our emergency manual and re revise our um, emergency procedures. Uh, part of that plan um, was doing uh, a very intentional fire drill on, on our closed day. Um, in the past, we have done our fire drill as the very last thing of the day, and then we would go home at the end of the day. Um, this time we did it right before the lunch hour, and we had the staff come back after the fire drill, after they followed all their procedures, and then the fire department gave their observations. They observed us from the outside as well as the inside of the building mm -hmm. and reflected on how well we performed, how quickly we could evacuate, um, how our communication uh, standards worked, and um, basically just our general performance about that. They gave us some tips. Um, they told us um, that our official evacuation and unification point should be on the front lawn in the plaza. 
Um, so we, we've got that incorporated into our procedures now, and we'll be updating all of that information. Was it somewhere else? We did not have one. Uh, that's what so, I thought. Okay. Uh, um, there was some discussion at one point mm -hmm. about trying to evacuate across the street to the church, and mm -hmm. we, de we deemed that an unsafe alternative. Yeah. So. Um, we felt that there was enough space that we would be able to put it on the front plaza. And once the renovation project is complete, that'll be an, an, a much nicer place to congregate. Um, it will still function during construction. I want to be clear that that is still an effective place for us to meet. Um, we determined that there was enough space for us to do so. Um, also part of that talk was um, a refresher course on our um, AED and CPR training. The mm -hmm. fire department had partnered with us in the month of February to provide some training. Um, and on that day, we kind of rehearsed again um, that we have those devices. We actually received them that day, <laughs> and they are now I installed. And you'll see a picture of our AED cabinets um, in, the, in my director's report this month. Uh, they, they're on every floor of the library, so all four, four floors of the library are equipped with an AED device now. And uh, they're immediately to the right side of elevator B. Mm -hmm. um, and everything that you would need to uh, help save a life in the event of cardiac arrest is included in that kit. And we currently have, um, let's see, 25 staff that are trained on how to use the AED devices. So that's a really that's great a resource mm -hmm. to provide. Um, the uh, Wilmette Police Officer Ray Pavley um, provided an overview of um, personal safety as well as how to respond to active shooter scenarios. Um, his presentation was very intense. Um, we are going to be developing an, uh, a lockdown procedure for the library, and we'll be rolling out a plan for that um, within the next year. It's going to take